morning in Jackson and West Tennessee. This is Tricks of the Trade. Phone lines will be open. The Victory Honda text line is open. We want to hear from you this morning. John Allen is here, the premier honeydew helper in West Tennessee, and let's get this thing off and running. Good morning, John. Good morning, Jim. How's it going today? Everything is good after a long day yesterday around oh, the stew pot. Isn't that the truth, man? Yeah. It's just stirring the stew. It's uh, didn't it's a day, though. Didn't used to be this hard. <laughs> I think there were other things that factored into that, like youth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or we old, were uh, both. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Just, yeah, things are getting up and down, you know. Yeah. Oh, I getting, got, getting down is not a problem. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. But you're right. Yeah, but but it's ready. Yep. It is. It will be, it'll be ready to pick up about 10 o'clock. If those of you who have reserved some Aldersgate stew for today, 10 o'clock to noon. And if you're coming uh, to the church, and you will be, Come on, the, come in on the Campbell Street side, and that'll put you directly in line with a pickup point under the portico on the north side. Yeah, and if you don't know what a portico is, that's a porch. Or a car porch. You just yeah. drive through it. <laughs> yep. And uh, you, we just uh, hang your wallet out the window. We'll take your bunny, <laughs> and right. then we'll slide some stew back in its place. We're like we'll be, we'll be like the, uh, the the grocery store. We ask that you open and close your own trunk. Huh. We're not even going to do that. You open it, we'll close it for you. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We'll even have a glove on if we need to. Yeah, we will. We will. And be, uh, be COVID friendly. That's right. If That's there right. is such a this thing. This will be the first COVID friendly stew, I think, in the area. And hopefully the last. I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. Phone numbers to call this morning to talk to John Allen, 731 891 6161. Or you can text it in to us at the Victory Honda text line. You know the deal, 731-410-7560. And uh, as John says, if you don't call us, he's going to babble all morning long. Uh, for at least an hour. <laughs> at least an hour. But I got something we can talk about this morning. That's a good thing. <laughs> it, it's, uh, you know, and, and it's only because I got leftover stuff from last week. Uh, okay. I got you, you know, leftovers are good. You. Leftover, yeah, this time of the year, leftovers are necessary. It, it is. You know, I, 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 I babbled a little bit at the end of the show last year, last week, last, last and year. Uh, re- regarding ceramic floors. That seems to be kind of a problem. So I thought I'd give you a little little history uh, to tell you how we got to where we got to and where we're going and all right. that. So, you know, back in the day, if you had a nice house, You know, you might have had some ceramic in it. And uh, ceramic tile was in some of the better homes. Oh, yeah. And when it was done right, it's probably still there today if the home's still standing. It looks about as good. Your grout may be a little dingy, but it'll be just as rock solid uh, as it was the day it was put up. And it's mainly because it was what they called mud set. Yeah. Uh, Mud set being here. Here's what they did. They, uh, you had the studs on your wall, and there wasn't nothing on them. And then you put wire, mm-hmm. uh, sheets of a uh, wire mesh on those studs, and then you'd put your scratch coat of cement on the wall or mortar, and then you come back and put another one, and you'd build it up to where that mortar was about an inch thick. If you had a floor, they they actually recessed your floor down about two inches and put concrete on top of your floor joist, right. brought it up about level to your floor, and then they put the tile on. And uh, if you had what was what called mud set tile, uh, which I don't know if anybody really does that anymore, but when you did it that way, that was done the right way took a long time to do it pretty labor intensive mm-hmm. but when you put it down it was finished now as always people gotten a little in a hurry i guess you'd say and they decided well, we got to have a better way a quicker way and a cheaper way to do things right so they decided to thin set the tile and thin set meant they would take your floor tile and just glue it on top of your subfloor and on your walls they would glue the tile right onto the sheetrock 
Well, that didn't work out too well. I would think not. It, no. uh, it, uh, if, if you had it on your walls and if you had the least, least little uh, crack in your grout, the water would get in there and the, the sheetrock would literally dissolve behind it. Yo. And you'd sit there and just wiggle your tile on the wall, and after a while, it'd fall off. And it'd be all black and moldy and all that behind it. In the floors, it would start cracking uh, because your floor wasn't thick enough to support it. Right. So that, that still remains probably one of the biggest problems with new homes with uh, ceramic tile. It's just about everybody has it now. But... Uh, the fact that it wasn't mud set and installed correctly. So I'll give you a couple of little tips uh, this morning to deal with that. If you are, uh, you know, uh, going to have a lot of ceramic put in your house, your floor is probably the most important thing. Uh, it's got to be thick enough to support that tile. You've got to have at least, according to manufacturer's recommendations, not mine, but right. manufacturer's, inch and a quarter subfloor thick now that's just the subfloor now the idea behind that is you don't want the floor to move or or give in any way if that floor moves or if you can jump up and down and it wiggle the, the dishes in the pantry uh -huh. you don't need to put tile on it gotcha. so and another thing you can't do is you can't take what they call uh durock or cement board and put that down on your floor, and that take the place of that inch and a quarter thickness. That that mat they put down now is only to give the tile something to stick to instead of the plywood. So it doesn't count as far as structural th uh, thickness. Right. So you need an inch and a quarter of wood floor, no particle board, and then you put your your half inch or quarter inch down on top of that, and then you stick your tile to it. If you'll do that, you'll have a pretty good floor. Now, on the walls, same thing. Don't use sheetrock at all. Get rid of it. Uh, put the, uh, the, the cement board on the wall. It'll come out flush with your half inch sheetrock that might be above the ceramic tile. But if you'll uh, put that on the wall or in your shower or wherever it might be and then stick the uh, tile to that, you'll have a good solid substrate. And it won't be quite as good in my opinion. That's in my opinion. Yeah. And that's the only one that counts right now. You got it. But uh, it, 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 it's not as good as the mud set, but it's about as good as you can get under today's uh, installation technique. Right. So you're all right. You you're talking about um, the the old way to do it, yeah. With the uh, with the wire and then put the scratch coat of the cement or the mortar yeah. on uh -huh. there. Does that does the the the, the uh, duroc or that board does that take a place of that nowadays? Yeah. Okay. Now you don't have uh, you can still knock a hole in it if you want to. Yeah. But it'll be a whole lot better than just sticking it on. Uh, Dry, on drywall and and moisture if it gets in there it won't hurt it yeah so you're in pretty good shape though. yeah so pretty cool okay so if you're getting ready to do that that's just something uh you might want to do because one of the number one problems with new homes now is the tile starts to crack yeah and that's because they tried to glue it down uh, right on top of a three-quarter inch subfloor and that's all yeah or they might have put uh sheetrock or uh green board which is that water resistant sheet rock they tried to put that on the wall and put it on top of and and it just doesn't doesn't it's, work right doesn't get it yeah, yeah cause, you know the house of my my dad built uh, the one i grew up in my teenage years 1964 is when that house was built and had two two ceramic bathrooms in it the little bitty octagonal tiles you remember those when they were hot oh yeah one of them was black and white and the other one was pink and white that's right and that pink and white one if I'm not mistaken, until the the current owners decided to do a complete remodel of that bathroom, was still there and still intact since 1964. Well, yeah. I have the original tile in my house right now, built in '59. Yep, and there's not a crack in it. 
amazing. It, you know? It's good the way they, they did the old stuff was a good thing. Had artisans back then. You didn't have contractors. Oh, you had man. artisans. Yeah, you yeah. did. They they knew what they were doing, and they knew how long it took, and yep. they wasn't pushed. And no matter what you said to them, it didn't make any difference. They didn't pay attention to they it. Gonna do they it. did it the they way they it right. thought it needed yeah. to be done. Yeah. yeah, some of the old folks that are listening to us this morning, if you go back that far, in Jackson, uh, our house, Dad's house, was built by James Smith. Yep. And he was he was he and Kenneth Grissom and two or three others back in those days were were probably the best in the business mm-hmm. because of what you just said. They took their time. They did it right, and they were proud of what they'd done. That's right. Yep. Mad's built mine, and he was another oh, yeah. fine. Builder. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, very meticulous in what he did, and you know they were artists back then. Yes, and, they were. Uh, yes, we could were. use a few more of those right now. That's yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, now, we've we've told the story before, but if you got plaster walls in some of those old houses, is your are yours plaster? They are cement plaster. Uh oh, that's a different thing. The entire wall, you had your stud, yeah, and then you had this wire lath, yep. nailed on top of it, and then I've got about an inch of cement. On top of that, embedded in the wire, yep, and then it's skimmed off, and then you paint it. It is rock hard. Yeah, that's, that's the one. That's the the house I'm talking about I, that we grew up in was that way too, until some young kid put a '59 Pontiac into the outside of it and busted all the. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, no, that was not good. I, I was putting my mother's car in the garage, '59 Pontiac. Okay, and a big car, right? And it has been raining, and my foot. And I'm sticking to this story I have for 70-something years now. My foot slipped off the brake, hit the accelerator, and I hit a pie safe, which was up against the wall of the of the garage, which was the back wall of the living room, right? Well, it looked okay. The pie safe didn't fall down, and I didn't think to check the wall, so everything was cool until we got ready to paint that living room, and they took down the full wall mirror that was in the dining room portion. And when they unscrewed that mirror and pulled it off the wall, the sh- all the plaster fell in one big lump. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, now, you know you just dated yourself. Oh, I know. Not many people know what a pie safe is anymore. That's true. <laughs> Not many people know what a Pontiac is anymore. Come That's to right. Of it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah. that was uh, that was, that was good times. Good yes, times. Yes, it was. Yes, Got a text was. coming in on the Victory Honda text line. You can do it, too. 4107560 says, John, my hot water pop-off valve was dripping a little, but now it's not. Does it need replacing? Uh, possibly. We've had something happen here lately that uh, used to didn't happen. Now, I don't know where you, the, the texture, I don't know where they live. Under this scenario, I'm going to assume they live north of town. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh, north no of I-40. Now you're getting spooky now. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, you know, the, the pop-off valve or the temperature relief valve is there in the event your thermostat or something malfunctions and it keeps heating. It's kind of like a boiler. Yeah. And if it gets too hot, unless that pressure can relieve itself, your water heater could essentially explode, Ooh. just like old borders could. Well, that's that's called a T&P valve, temperature and pressure valve. The pressure and the temperature when your water pressure is around 55, 60 pounds, right. you're okay. But north of town and in some of the uh, rural areas where reasons that I don't know, and I'll just use one area in particular, uh, Shepherd's Field, for instance. Yeah. Their water pressure's high. Really? And they have pressure-reducing valves in your front yard right beside your water meter. Now, when you add heat, and you add pressure together, sometimes it'll cause your uh, pressure reducing valve to, uh, I mean, your uh, TNP valve to discharge a little water as it's supposed to. Right. So up north, you used to have an extra little feature on your water heater that you don't have down here very often. And that's called an expansion tank. Hmm. And what that is is a little... Uh, a jug about the size of a, a, a gallon jug that that mounts on top of your water heater and it's just got air in it. 
And when things kind of heat up and the pressure's a little high, it it will expand and it will go up into that tank to relieve some of that pressure. So here's what you got to do sometimes. And I've had to do four of these this year where up until this year, I've only put on one in the 43 years I've been in business. Wow. And that is you had to put a pressure, I mean, a, 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 a pressure tank in. Right. And uh, so this, the caller, the texter that's calling in, you may have just a faulty valve, and if so, unscrew it, put you another one on. But if it does it again, you may have to put an expansion tank in or lower the water pressure in your house, which is relatively easy to do, but you'll have to go buy a, a, a pressure reducer uh, valve and then drop it down. They make these little gauges that you can buy at the plumbing stores that you can screw on the end of your outside faucet mm-hmm. and see how high the pressure is in your house. And if it's around 55, 60 pounds, you're okay. But like I was one one the other day that was 115. Whoa. And I was at another one that was 90. Well, luckily they had one of these devices in the front yard. So went out there and just tightened the nut and it dropped the pressure and uh everything was well water heater was working okay and you didn't have that discharge of water okay now the obvious question to me is why would subdivision a have normal pressure and subdivision b would have higher pressure when they're tapping off of the same water source well they're not I mean, yes, they uh, are. Well, you know, <laughs> no. in, in some areas, and I don't mean this critical. It's not yeah. critical. It's just the way it is. When, when the city went into annexation and all that years ago, and we mm-hmm. took in a lot of property out yep. north, we had to provide services right. for those people. And we ran into, we sometimes had to pump the water to get adequate pressure to these houses, depending upon where things were located and how close they were to uh, the, the tanks and things like that. So they they pumped it. Same thing on sewage. You couldn't get the the poop to flow downhill, <laughs> so you had to pump it. Yeah. And uh, you had to put in lift stations and just to make things work. And that's just the way it is. You can't help it, but, okay. you know, it's just the way it is. Oh, well, you know, they, they, again, to my very simple simple mind, it just didn't didn't make sense. You know, that's right. You're on the public water system. You would think the pressure would be pretty much unless you were right there at a pumping station for some reason. Well, it, it, but it's not. But it's not. That's I, weird. I, I'll okay. bet you the pressure at my house is different than it is at your your house. Yeah. Well, you know, I remember back in the day when when I in my, my other career, uh, there was uh, there was a subdivision out north uh, that was notoriously uh, known for its low water pressure, hmm. the timbers. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was where I put my first uh, expansion tank in. Really? See, their water supply comes out of, I think, Bells. Could be. Not from Jackson. Right. The timbers, and uh, this lady kept having her her. Uh, uh, pressure redu- her pressure valve on the, on the water heater kept blowing and discharging water and I couldn't figure out why until we checked the pressure and it's on up there hmm. it's, uh, interesting yeah it's all yeah. right another texture says and this goes back to my my plaster falling off the wall after I poked it real good with a car <laughs> it says you have to learn the fine art of denial <laughs> <laughs> I think I've gotten too old to learn that. You know, old that's old not a river in Egypt either. No, not not, not denial, but denial is a, yeah. Uh, good point. Good point. You know, you know, somebody told me. I think it's probably my my dad or my granddad or my mother maybe told me a long time ago. If you tell the truth on the front end, you don't have to remember which story you told to who. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. But yeah, that's a good idea, Texter. Uh, that, uh, that that may work. I may use that on my grandkids when they start doing that, <laughs> that mm. sort of thing. Do the do the twins uh, blame one another? Uh, not a lot. No, no. They they uh, they tend to control one another. I mean, you know, one of them one of them does something, the other one will get on to her about it. Oh. So you know, they got they got their own little their little built-in police force there. Uh oh. <laughs> 
Uh oh. Well, all right, Tim. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Boy, I tell you what, nine years old going on 20. Yeah. <laughs> Won't be long. No, won't be long. Let's take about two minutes and hear from some of our sponsors. You're listening to John Allen on Tricks of the Trade. It is Saturday morning in West Tennessee. And you're listening to 93.1. Don't forget you can see it right now on y'all.com or uh, newstalkwesttennessee.com or West Tennessee. No, that's the Facebook page. Uh, yeah, West. Hell, help me. News Talk West Tennessee. Just come on up here and sit down and have <laughs> breakfast with us. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's a, and it smells so good over there. Anyway, you can catch it on Facebook right now or later in the day. It'll be on YouTube, y'all, y'all.com YouTube, and leave the apostrophe out of it, Y-A-L-L, and uh, you'll be right there. You can see what we're doing up here and yeah. wonder, wonder why we do it. That's right. <laughs> we'll be right back. Here at Jackson Off-Road, we are a complete automotive service center that does work on area business fleets, servicing and repairing both diesel and gas engines. Our experienced technicians and advanced technology will upgrade your company's vehicle's performance, saving you significant dollars. Ground Snack Food said, Jackson Off-Road keeps our fleet of vehicles on the road in a timely manner, regardless of what repairs are required or what time of the day or night we call for service or repair. Jackson Off-Road, online and on the 45 Bypass. I don't feel like I'm 2020 anymore. Lack of energy during the day, difficulty sleeping, reduced mental focus and memory, weight gain, including belly fats, reduced sexual desire, and performance. Studies show after the age of 30, most people produce 3 to 10% less hormones each year, and I felt it. I decided to do something about it, but I didn't want 152 shots of synthetic testosterone per year. What I discovered is changing my life. All testosterone replacement is not the same. Hormone pellets contain the same chemical structure as your body's natural hormones. They're placed under the skin and release bioidentical testosterone consistently to the bloodstream and last up to six months. Same thing with estrogen for females. I feel great. I don't want you to waste it on the young. I want it wasted on me. Feeling better for you can start with a simple phone call. Dr. Shannon Brown at Advanced We Have a Medical. It's 731-503-4277. It's 503-4277. Call today. 731-503-4277. You'll be glad you did. Caution. Listening to this radio station may make you hungry. Good thing we're broadcasting from the Dixie Cafe, WTJS 93.1 FM for West Tennessee. Let's say you've decided to build a bicycle from scratch. Sounds like an impossible project for my skills. But let's say you've got the skills and I offer you an advantage, a special tool that would help you build a bike faster while saving you legitimate money. My guess is, you'd say, bring it on. If you wouldn't, well then this commercial isn't going to make much sense. My name is Ryan, I'm from United Faith Mortgage, and we believe we have an advantageous tool for you. Our mortgage team is lucky to have a direct lender advantage. Our company is set up to use its own money and make its own lending decisions within its own walls. And often, this advantage allows us to get your refinance or new home loan done faster and get you a better rate, which saves you monthly and lifelong money. Rates are historically low. Now is the time to see how our special tool might work for you. We are United Faith Mortgage. United Faith Mortgage is a DBA of United Mortgage Corp. 25 Mill Park Road, Melville, New York. Licensed mortgage banker. For all licensing information, go to animalistconsumeraccess.org. Corporate animalist number 1335. Rack animalist number 65233. Equal housing lender. I license in Alaska, Hawaii, Georgia, Massachusetts, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Utah. You're listening to Tricks of the Trade. John Allen is here. We're live from the Dixie Cafe on 93.1. And we are very, very blessed on this show to have two great sponsors, people that we know and that we have used. And uh, therefore, we can talk about them firsthand. So yes, we can. Pick one, and we'll talk about the other one a little uh, bit later. Well, I'll tell you what. Let, let's talk about old Stormy at the economy side. Let's do now, that. Uh, You know, he's been around a long time. And the thing I like about people that, that have businesses, they're not just figureheads that really don't know what it's all about and all they do is collect the money. Uh -huh. Old Stormy gets out there with them. He yeah. knows exactly the ins and outs. He knows why things do what they do and how to do things when they don't do what they're supposed to do. Did I get enough do's in you there? You did. You, yeah, okay. you do that, you do that I, good. I do that good. All right, well, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just very simple product knowledge and, and knowing how to do it. So... If you need siding, I don't think there is any better in my book. If you need replacement windows, which now that's something. If you've ever had a replacement window put in wrong, yeah, you'll know what I'm talking about. But 
they get them in just right. They know how windows expand and contract, how to flash them in to where they don't leak. And they don't use in a large, abundant amount of caulking like some of these others do. <laughs> Sparingly. I mean, you know, you know, a caulking gun has saved many a carpenter. <laughs> True. You know, if they don't cut it right, they'll plug it with yeah, caulk. You can well, make a corner look just right. <laughs> oh, man, they can make it pretty. And, uh, but, but, no, they, they cut things to fit. They trim it out right. They make it look like it grew there. Yeah. And uh, I, that's what I like about their replacement windows. And then gutters. You know, they put up gutters. Oh, we've been talking about these uh, uh, gutter guards. Gutter guards, yeah. And uh, it seems like every, every week somebody calls in and wants to talk about those. And uh, they got the good kind, and they can put them on for you. And uh, they're just good at what they do. They kind of jump in there, and then they get it done and clean up their mess. And that's another thing that a lot of people don't do anymore True. is clean up their mess. Absolutely. So if you need something done around the house as far as siding or windows or gutters, you know, uh, give Economy Siding a call. I know them firsthand. I use them. They're on my projects every day. And uh, we've used them for years and years. And one thing I know about them that I can't say about everybody is, once I get them on there and get started, I don't have to check on them. Yeah. Yep. And uh, they let me know when they're done. I'll check it over, and and, and I, we just don't have callbacks. So That's a good thing. One of those things. So that is a good thing. Give them a call. They, uh, they're they great. And, Jimmy, why don't you uh, rattle off the phone number over there? 422-3828-731, area code, of course. Or you can catch them online at economystiding.com. It's they're local. Simple. They're good. And uh, – They'll be your best friend for it's over with. You know, somebody asked me the other day, and I honestly couldn't answer this because I've known Stormy for so long. The person called me and said, what is Stormy's first name? I said, Stormy. That's all I know. <laughs> I, I know that. Okay. Well, he, he might not want everybody to know He, he don't want to be called that for yeah. some reason. Yeah. But, that's, but that's okay. Yeah. It's just like one of your uh, newscasters that's here. Yes. He, that's not his real name either. Well, that, that, there's a lot of that going on. That's right. <laughs> not here, but yeah. some of them, some of them do. Uh, we, got, we were talking about water pressure a while ago. Yeah. This, uh, this texture says, when JEA first ran water to Medina, we had homes that were blowing supply lines off. Luckily, they got it under control pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah. It was, a, it was a problem early on because they were doing everything with pumps. Yeah. And uh, you don't see too many water towers going up yeah, anymore. I saw a, a new water tower that I hadn't noticed. I think it's out near the industrial park near the airport. Just huh. just before you get to Highway 70, if you're coming off the interstate, I took my dog to the uh, to the uh, groomer a week or so ago. And I think, I, at least I hadn't been out that way in a couple of months, it looked like a new tower to me, just across from uh, Central Distributors out in that area there. I hadn't seen that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. It had JEA on, on the side of it, so I figured. Yeah. You know, that's another here. thing. You mentioned that it blew supply lines off. Uh-huh. These, uh, I, I need to give that little tip to people. You know, you go to the store and, and uh, you get you a new faucet. Right. And uh, people want to hook them up. And I always tell folks, don't ever use the same supply line because it was it's it's kind of made itself to fit that old faucet. And uh, chances are it'll leak if you put it back on. But but you know everybody's got away from the metal supply lines. You used to have a copper tube that went up there, and, and you had a ferrule on it, and you'd tighten it down. It'd crimp up on that pipe. Uh-huh. And now they've they've gone to plastic supply lines. Well, those plastic supply lines, you won't find one of those on my job site because I don't allow them. We don't like them because, you know, some folks will get them too tight or too loose or they'll blow out. Mm -hmm. You know, these uh, stainless steel braided supply lines now are the things that I tell everybody to go by. They're uh, easy to work with. Just tighten them up. They're flexible. Uh, they'll last forever. And just need to, to stay away from those plastic ones because the thing I found out about those, going back working on this stuff uh, after somebody put it in, is you don't use the little metal ferrules yeah. on that. You use plastic ones. 
And most of the time, people put the plastic ones in upside down. <laughs> That's not good. And you put them in upside down, they will cut into that pipe. And next thing you know, you'll have a flooded house. And it'll always happen when you're not there. Of course. And uh, then you got a problem. So Would that, would that also hold true for a uh, ice maker on your refrigerator? Same, same type of? Yep. yep. Same situation. I, I like the stainless steel lines on, on those. A lot of people will use the plastic. It's inexpensive. Yeah. But it, it's not necessarily the pipe. It's the connection. And where it ties into the rest of that water line, you got to have what you really need and get it tight just right. If you over-tighten it, you're going to have a problem. If you don't tighten it enough, you're going to have a problem. Right. So it's got to be just right. So the stainless steel ones are, are less likely to get the little pinholes in them like the plastic That's right. ones did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, they've got their own little built-in washers, and you tighten them down and uh, get them snug, and they're there, and you don't have these pesky leaks anymore. Cool. Listen to John Allen on Tricks of the Trade on this Saturday morning, and we've got a text that says, you are correct. There is a new water tower near the airport. How about so, yeah. that? So go out, you, while you're out and about, you know, just stroll by there and check it out. Well, good. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Other, let's say we've got another text here, and it says, what bait do you put in squirrel traps? And unrelated to that question, how far are you behind in accepting new customers? Well, we take new customers every day. Now, it might be a little while before we can get to the job. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, we're, we're not too bad off. Uh, you know, just give me a call. And it depends on what you have done because we do so many different things. Mm -hmm. uh, you may have to wait a while for one trade, but we might be – fairly well caught up on another so you can uh, just just call my office and uh talk to someone down there and the best thing to do is let us come out see what you need done and then we can tell you how long it'll take to get to it 427 1120 is that's that right 427 yep. 1120 that's right absolutely and as to your first part of your question what what bait do you put in a squirrel uh squirrel trap depends if you're trying to trap a guy squirrel you put a female squirrel that's in there. right <laughs> Or vice versa. <laughs> yeah, vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Texter. We appreciate that. Here's another one coming through with the Dixie, the Victory Honda text line. Dixie Cafe, Victory Honda. We, you know, it's yeah, a different right. thing. Yeah. We know what you're talking about. Do they make a braided water line that goes from the ice maker valve up to the ice maker itself? Yes, because I have one on my refrigerator. Yes. Uh, they, they, uh, they leak as well, but never seen that line available in braided. Well, now, I think you might be a little mistaken, Jim. Okay. From, from your kitchen sink, say, over to your ice maker. Oh, okay. Yes, they do have a braided line. Okay, that's what but, I was thinking. But to go from the valve on the refrigerator up the back of the refrigerator, you might have a point there. You may not find that. Now, you can do it in copper. They do make a little copper right. line, and you'll get a compression fitting and tie it on. Uh, that you can get, but not yep. in a braided that I'm aware of. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm thinking and looking at the back of my my refrigerator in my in my head. There, it seems to me like the 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 line there, there is a plastic line that is actually built in onto the back of the refrigerator. Yeah, but the hooker upper from the wall to there is a coiled braided. Yeah, yeah, pipe. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, about. that's yeah, right. Yeah, that'll work. There you go, Texter. Thank you very much. Here's another one on the Victory Honda text line, and it says, bait that trap with electric wire, gutter parts, piece of wood, because that's what they seem to like to chew on around here. <laughs> that's a great idea. Put a piece of electrical wire in there, and they'll come to it. Let's put that in your coon trap. Yep, that too, yeah. And a piece of face aboard if it's a squirrel. <laughs> Because they like to gnaw on that all the time. Dexter, that was very creative. I appreciate that. I like that. Yeah, that's you good. You know, it, it's funny. Squirrels are they're trying to get in your house this time of the year. Oh, yeah. But you go by and you're working on a house and you hear something. And you look to your right and you look to your left. And you don't see anything. And then you hear it again. And that's a squirrel going up the downspout. Yeah. And he'll go up that downspout. And next thing you know, you hear something else. It's like something chewing. Uh -huh. And you look up, and there's that squirrel sitting in the gutter. He's just sitting there. 
and he'll bend over and he'll gnaw a little while. He's got his own little platform built up there. <laughs> and uh, he'll gnaw but on that little bit of wood from the top of your gutter to the bottom of your roof. And there's about two inches right there. Yep. And he'll gnaw a hole in there. And he's got his own little porch built. See, he leaves the roofing. Yeah. Now, the coon will eat the roofing. <laughs> but the squirrel will leave the roofing, cut the, cut the uh, face of board out, and he'll slide in and out right there. And you won't know it till you hear him up in the attic. But he'll come out, and he'll run down the gutter, and then he'll go down the downspout and come out. That way you don't have to jump. Okay. See, you don't ever see, see a squirrel I've, I've with a got, broken leg, do you? I just realized I've got I've got a genuine squirrel trap then because you come down a couple of my gutters, you come into a plastic pipe that runs underground to a pop-up head, and he ain't coming out of that pop-up head. <laughs> you fixing to have a clogged-up gutter. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, I told you about that a couple of weeks ago. I was getting a lot of blowback out of one of my gutters during yeah. a hard rain. I, I I found it, and the reason the reason it wasn't working is that uh, when we mulched back in the spring, the people who put the mulch down mulched over it and had it covered up so the pop up couldn't pop up. Ergo, it came backwards. Yeah. Here's yeah. An, here's another another handy hint. It says I use corn on the cob. In the freezer section, you'll find the little niblet ears of corn. I cut them up, one inch thick slabs. Squirrels love it. You'll catch one right after the other. Do you have to put butter and salt on it? It depends on your squirrel, I think. That's yeah. right. Those yeah. uppity ones, you got to fix yeah. that corn. If I was a squirrel, I'd, that's what I'd demand. That's exactly yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea, yeah. too. Thank you, Texters. Appreciate that. Yeah, just cut them, cut them off and make little, uh, little slabs out of them and have at it. That'll work. I just, I, you know, I keep saying I'm going to do this because I have squirrels that raid my, my bird feeders. And they I'm supposed to, my bird feeders are the kind that it's supposed to be squirrel proof. There is no such thing. They're going to find a way if they can get to it. So these little suckers will get up there and they'll hang upside down off of the feeder. Yep. And put their little hands in there and rake it out on the ground and then drop down to the ground and feast on my bird food. Mm -hmm. What I need is a good pellet gun and a little bit of time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Quality entertainment right there. Yeah, you got <laughs> <laughs> that is Southern style entertainment, isn't it, John Raw? He knows about Southern style. That's right. We got, and, a, and, we got a thumbs you know, up over there. Could be worse. Go high tech, have bug zapper instead of a fly swatter. <laughs> That's true. And uh, you'd be all right. <laughs> Do you remember when those bug zappers first came out? I mean, it became a pastime. It was up there with baseball. Is sitting out there on a hot summer afternoon and watching those big bugs hit that zapper and then sizzle. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, as people used to tell me, I never did this because I'm not a beer drinker, but a yeah. six-pack and a bug zapper or a fly swatter <laughs> is quality entertainment on a Saturday afternoon. That's right, That's right man. That rag rack's right up there with the West Tennessee rat killing, I'll tell you what. Now, I'm going I'm to say something here. Now, you, you, we were off off mic a little while ago we were talking and we do that a lot I, I wonder how many talking about entertainment everybody everybody ever tied a a thread onto the leg of a june bug yep. and flew it around yeah oh yeah absolutely and uh yeah i used to do that when i was a kid go get some mama's thread and tie it on a june bug and, yep. and the thing of it is you could get it out there about four or five feet mm -hmm. but if you got longer than that there was so much drag involved in the line, <laughs> right. it pulled the June pull bug back to you. That's true. And you sure you don't want to try that with a monofilament fishing line because it's entirely too heavy. It is. They, they can't fly with a fishing line. Now, they can do it with thread all day long. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely, man. I bet more. kids nowadays, they wouldn't know what to do with that. No. And wouldn't care to, probably. Well, you can talk about quality entertainment now. There you have it, you know. I mean, if that's all you got. Now, springtime comes, we're going to have to come over to your house one weekend when you got the kids, the yeah. twins. Yeah. And, and we'll have to do, do that. that. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. I think we that'd be kind of cute. Yeah, and, you know, the same thing. Now, they have done this because I've, I've been out there with them and helped them with it a little bit. And that's uh, catching, catching uh, uh, lightning bugs. 
fireflies, if you if you will. Oh. Lightning bugs, where we came from. Yeah, they're lightning bugs. Yeah. We don't have fireflies. No, no. They got them up in the northern part That's of the right, world, yeah. them Yankee Yan- American Yankee up American up bugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, you catch those and you put them, you put them in a little mason jar with some holes poked in the top of it, so they can breathe. And you got yourself a little bit of a, 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 a hazard signal. You can put that. You know, if you're on the road, you put that on your trunk, and cars will see you and pull over and help you. Speaking of lightning bugs, and I don't yeah. know why in my twisted mind this comes to mind, but the the big thing now is to get you a a, a strand of Christmas lights uh-huh. and wad them up and throw them in a mason jar. And plug them in by your bed for a nightlight. Now, I haven't seen that. Now, I have seen, like, Christmas baskets, you know, so you, like a basket that you can kind of see through, and you you put a wad of Christmas lights, the little bitty ones, in, in the bottom of that. Then you put your greenery and your bow and everything on top of it and then plug it in, and it kind of... Now, you, gotta, you can only do that with the modern LED little Christmas lights. Mm-hmm. If you try to use them big bulb Christmas lights, you're going to melt your basket. <laughs> you melt your basket, start a fire. <laughs> and, uh, and besides that, it doesn't look quite right. No, it doesn't. A little. Now, uh, while we're, while we're uh, amazing and amusing, whatever children happen to be listening at this time morning on Saturday, they're still uh-huh. asleep. That's because you can't watch Superman That's anymore. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Mighty Mouse, where is he? That's right. Where is ever. Mighty Mouse yep. nowadays? But uh, uh, bubble lights. Did you have bubble lights on your tree back in the day? Bubble light? You don't remember those? No. They, they had a round base on them, and they were colored, of course. And then they had what looked like a candle. That stuck straight up, and it had a liquid in it, sort of like a, like a, a, a lava lamp, only it wasn't that thick. It was more watery looking. And you put them on your tree, and when you plugged them in, that little base got hot, and it would make those the candle part of it, which was clear, would make it bubble. You can actually buy those again. Huh. Yeah, I always I, thought you was one of us, Jim. That sounds like <laughs> one of them uppity things. <laughs> we have one string of them. Did you? Yeah, I think it had like eight or nine on there. You know, you just strategically put it on the tree where that's what you saw. But I, I have to look into that. But you had to be careful with them back in the old uh, real tree days because they that base would get hot. Huh. It had to get hot in order to bubble the juice. I can't believe put I've seen something tree. you haven't. <laughs> yeah, how about that? You put that on your cedar tree? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Huh. But you didn't. Now, I, here, here's another thing. When you left the house at Christmas time, did you have to unplug your tree? Oh, man. I couldn't even. The, the tree only stayed about a, on about an hour and a half at night. Yeah. Because Daddy was, he was scared to death of a fire. Absolutely. And you always saw, had those big bulbs on uh-huh. there. But, no, you always. You couldn't. Even if you were in the house, if you wasn't in the same room with the tree, it was unplugged. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, I still do that. If we're going out somewhere, I'll turn the trees off. Now, I will leave my exterior illumination on if I'm not home. Hmm. I got a new piece this year. Do you? Yeah, I think it's going, I think it's going to look cool. I had this problem. I, I always put a, a, I try to put a lighted wreath yeah. in my upstairs window yeah. on the, to match the two down low, right? Mm-hmm. Well, the only way to get this thing up there is to open the window and hang out from the <laughs> from yeah, the store and have uh-huh. up and stick it on there with a with a, a stopper, a, a suction cup. That's right. Well, my wife wasn't too thrilled with me hanging out that window. Hmm. To be perfectly honest, so but I did it anyway. But but the problem was Stormy had come over and replaced that window for me, and it was different than that old wood sash that was in there before, which I could run the wire inside to my yeah. electrical thing and close it tight. Yeah. The new ones are made, the new windows are made differently and you, you can't close it all the way with a wire hanging out. That's of right. It. So we were washing yon window the other day and my wife said, I can't get to that top section. I wonder if it tilts. I said, no, it doesn't tilt. Yes, it does. It does. I could most easily have tilted that thing in, stuck my wreath on there without hanging out the window, but no, did I do that? Uh Uh-uh. Amazing. Duh. (laughs) (laughs) Big red truck. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah. So, anyway, I got something new that it's going to illuminate from the inside. I got to get me some more suction cups. Yeah. 
Do you do you use those command strips? No. I do. Do you? I, yeah. I, that's what I hang my, I use the little bitty ones. That's what I hang my stockings on the chimney with care with. On, huh. the, on the front of the mantle. Yeah. Because I decorate on top of the mantle, and yeah. I, I don't have room for the little things that have the hook on them. Oh. So rather than screwing in a cup hook under the base of it, I started using those command hooks, and I really like them. You don't really put much in your stocking then, do you? No, not really. No. no. You know, my first stocking when I got married, it wasn't a stocking. It was a pantyhose. <laughs> a long-legged pantyhose. Mrs. We, Claus was with yeah. you that night. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Okay. She would stuff that thing. You know, it, when, when, when uh, I don't know how it was in your house, but the stockings back in when you were little, they were for fruit and candy. Yep. Yep. You get you an orange and an apple and a banana and, some and a Hershey nuts. bar and oh, some yeah. walnuts. Yep. And uh, get them big old nuts. What? What's not the English walnut? Yes. That's the big one. Yeah, the, the big brown ones. Yeah, the yeah. ones you have to use to crack. That's the one, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, they don't do that anymore either. No, and everything's different, you know. Yeah. Cause we, now, I, you know, I, yeah, orange was one. You know, that's one thing I always look forward to is well, yeah, of course, you, y'all, when you said something about it, you always got the story from one of your parents or your grandparents. Uh-huh. Well, back when I was little, that was all you got for Christmas. Yep. You was glad you get it, get two two oranges and an apple. Yeah. What and was that the, was what you had. What was the story about you get a, you get a, if you weren't good, you get a stocking full of a lump of coal? Coal, yeah. 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 I never got that. I must have been better than I thought I was. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Can't buy coal anymore. That's probably why you hadn't got it. Well, hey, wait till this next administration comes in. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you That's ain't right. going to find coal nowhere. Here's yeah. a text coming in on the Victory Honda text line. It says, John, I'm thinking of shiplap in a bathroom. Could I cut it smooth? Could I cut smooth plywood into strips to achieve this? Try and save a little money. Thanks. Of course you can. Shiplap is the most overrated decoration <laughs> I have ever in my life come across. Thanks to the Gaines family of Waco, Texas. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, you, know you, you can go to the, one of these stores and you can buy shiplap and pay an awful lot of money for it. Or you can do just as that texter was talking about, get you some quarter-inch plywood, rip it up into strips of your desired width, and then leave a crack in between it. Yep. Stick it right on the, the, the drywall, nail it on, or however you want to attach it, and there you go. You're done. Yep. Okay. There you go, Texter. This quick and easy. And uh, yeah. you, I guess you would want the, the the kind of plywood like you would do for a cabinet door or something like that. Get it's a, got a, it's got a nice plywood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, you can buy, if you really want to, uh, and this will probably be easier, get Luon plywood um, or... It, it's smoother, and it's good on both sides, and uh, relatively inexpensive. Right. And it, as long as you got a table saw and a good rip fence that's accurate on it, you just slice that thing up. Uh, go long ways. Don't go across. Uh, cut it to eight foot way yeah. to where you got pieces like eight inches wide and eight foot long. Do that, and right. uh, that that's the way you do it. Okay, Texter, you got it. Get after it. <laughs> That's right. Call us when you're done. Uh, don't forget, let us, let don't forget to paint your like. edges before you put it up. Now. Yeah, that's a good idea, too. That's right. That's a good uh, idea, too. You know, some people want the uh, the groove or, or the crack between the laps to be a different color. Yeah. And if you'll kind of measure that out before you put the ship lap on and just paint your lines, and it doesn't have to be pretty, just, uh, you know, slop it on the wall right there and then put your sli- ship lap on top of it. That makes it really quick and easy. Get you some little uh, little brad nails, and yeah. you're all right. Yeah, cool. Another texture. Now, texture, I'll apologize to you before I read the text. I thought I had given it. I know I have, uh, but not maybe not enough. Since I have not heard the phone number this morning, I'll text. No. Uh-oh. 731-891-6161 is the phone number. And I apologize if you missed that. What should we do about fire ants? And we attacked that last week, and one of the products I remember was Andro. That's right. A-N-D-R-O. That's pretty good stuff, and you just put it on the mound. It's a granular, and uh, it it worked pretty good. Uh, I haven't really attacked fire ants myself, but 
a lot of my friends that have them out in rural areas and some even in town, uh, they swear by that stuff. It works pretty good. Yep. 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 There you go, Texter. Give that a shot. I imagine you can find that in at the big box stores pretty much. Yeah, I think Lowe's and Home Depot has it. I'm sure Ace, Ace Hardware, Hardware has yeah. it. Uh, you know, you might even find it down one aisle of Kroger's. Who knows? They, yeah. they got everything else in there. There you go. There you go. Texter, yeah. thank you very much, and I apologize for not saying the phone number enough. 731-891-6161. That'll put you right in the, in the board. Text line works also, as you have just recently found out. All right. We're going to take two and a half minutes here from our sponsors, and we'll be back. It's about 12 minutes till the top of the hour. So we uh, still got a little time to take your questions and your comments. So stay with us. We're more than just printing. With XMC, the possibilities are endless. Let XMC, your Xerox authorized sales agent, help take your business to the next level. Whether you need electronic document management to update your office, a projector system for your boardroom, a high-tech flat panel welcome center in your lobby, or an upgrade to your existing office equipment, visit XMCINC.com and let XMC and Xerox handle your product installation from start to finish, as well as providing all technical support. With nine territories in the southeast, XMC has you covered. Here and there, but uh, hi, sissy. Oh, well, hey, Brenda. Hey, Tony. Um, got a question for you. Sure, what's up? Is your place for sale? Well, I haven't really thought about it. Why? Well, it's just a really beautiful place out in the country, right by the lake. Nice home, deck, pool, a few extra acres for hunting. Just wondering. Oh, yeah? Why is that? Well, Hal McKeever is a great real estate guy, and he's looking for new properties like yours. And this Hal McKeever, he's got buyers all across the country looking for properties just like yours. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's MacGyver. Uh, no. That's a TV show. Got property you just can't manage or you're ready to cash out and head to the beach? Call Hal McKeever, uh, Hal MacGyver at United Country MacGyver Land and Realty at 660-5152. That's 660-5152. Debt reduction depends on creditors' balances and payments, client testimonials, or dramatizations. If you owe $10,000 in credit card debt and your minimum payments siphon away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. Call Get Debt Free Now to resolve your debt once and for all. My family no longer has 20 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you you see results. Make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Call 800-683-3844. 800-683-3844. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. It is indeed. This is Saturday morning time, and it is the Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. Text line 410-7560-731, the area. And the call in line, 731-891-6161. We've got about uh, eight minutes or so to, to wrap up things today. So. Well, let, let's talk about one of our boys here that helps us out yeah, here. Yeah, one of our newer, newer sponsors. That's and we right. appreciate what oh. they're doing for us. You know, once again, I, I, I speak highly of these folks. West 10 Fence Company, uh-huh. uh, excellent fencing company here in town. They're local, located over on Hollywood Boulevard. And if you need a fence at your house, they're the people to call. Right. All you got to do is just uh, give them a call, talk to Terry or one of the boys down there, and they'll come out, assess your situation. They'll ask you what kind of fence you want. You You can put up a... Uh, a metal fence or a wood fence or a cyclone fence or a plastic fence or I imagine they'd put your barbed wire fence up if you <laughs> ask them for it. I bet they would. But uh, they're, they're experts in all of this. They do it right. They got good crews that come out. They get in there and take care of things, clean up their mess, and next thing you know, your dog can't get out no more. There you go. And uh, so I highly recommend West End Fence Company. And uh, they're also experts in automatic gates. And uh, if you want to get real highfalutin at your house and maybe you got the Ponderosa and you got a big fence around it 
and you want to put a gate up, gate up to keep the cows out, yep. and just sit in your house, sit in your car, and push a button, and it'll open, and it'll close. There you go. And all by itself. All by itself. Yeah. So that, man, that's a good thing. They do things like that. They do, and and they're they're very trustworthy. Well, we've we've had experience with them before. Yeah. My situation was replacing a fence that had gotten old and needed to be replaced. And they came out there and, and looked at it, and uh, he said, well, here's here's what we're going to do, and here's about what it's going to run. But he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He said, I've looked at all those those posts, the four-by-fours that are in the ground. Mm-hmm. He said, they don't need to be replaced. He said, he said I'm, I'm going to leave them there because they're good and solid, and we'll just run some new new horizontals and new boards, and you'll be you'll be in like a porch climber. That's right. A lot of, po- a lot of people would have pulled those posts up, put new ones in, charged you for them. money. Yeah. But they don't do that. That's yeah. not the way. That's the, nothing the way they work. Six six eight, fifty nine fifty nine. We have a text in, and it says West End Fence Company is hiring right now. Ooh, good luck with that. I hope they find somebody. Yeah, we can't find anybody to work. Honestly, that is that is that is just crazy. I'm telling you, it is. Just well, that's crazy. that's good. Well, it's um, you got to, you got to have a PhD to work for them. Do you do? A lot of education required. PhD. Post hole digger. <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> I made it this far into the show, and I had to ask. All right. Okay. Hey, we've got a uh, phone call coming in here. Let me grab the the blue mouse, and we'll hit uh, that right there and say, go ahead, John. Good morning. Welcome to Tricks of the Trade. Well, good morning to you. I just wanted to make a little Christmas comment. Okay. Um, this year, I've been in the process of getting new LED lights out throughout my house. And it has made such a wonderful difference in the lighting in my house and in my carport. And for anyone that does not know what to give their elderly friends for Christmas, a new LED light in the carport is a great idea, or new LED lights in the bathroom or the kitchen. That's an excellent I, I thing. did get some for my my kitchen that is supposed to last 22 years, and they only lasted about six months. <laughs> so I think the LED folks have still got some work to do <laughs> to get it just exactly right. But it has really been nice in my house, and that's something I'm going to give my elderly neighbor uh, is new lights for the carport. So as they come and go, they can see so much better. That's excellent. an excellent idea. It yeah. really is. Really is. Yeah. Well, anyway, it has worked well at my house, and I just thought I'd throw that out there because I know there's a lots of people thinking, what can I get them? And that is a very good idea. And I, I guess your company comes out and changes light fixtures. Does, oh, does your company do that? They do. They sure do. We do a lot of them. And, okay. Uh, I appreciate okay. you calling in this All morning. Right, then. Have have a good weekend. All right. You too. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Yeah, in fact, you're coming to practice that at my house. I'm going to. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, it's another thing. Talk about outside lights. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of folks, and the LEDs are great, but some people, they put fluorescent lights out in their carports, mm-hmm. and when it gets real cold. They don't want to start. They don't want to come on. See, I made that mistake on my patio. I have two, the little small uh, U shape tube yeah fluorescence out there for my to light my backyard mm-hmm. wrong bag mistake yeah they a little I'm correct that one of these days soon. now you think about that and you say well service stations they got fluorescent lights well yeah. they got cold weather ballast in those makes them start different quicker. animal so uh leds will work real good on the outside don't use fluorescence yep and it's time to get away from the old Edison incandescent light bulbs right. because LED will last a whole lot longer. Yep, unless you're using those little wire strings for decoration outdoors. I think, uh, well, I do. You know, I've got them around my patio. The little little Edison bulbs that hang down from a naked wire sort of. Thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they look pretty cool outside, you know, for, for just for decoration, not so much for illumination. There you go. There you go. That'll work. I wonder if the, I wonder if they make those bulbs in colors, like red and green for Christmas festivity. Yes, they do. Yes, cool. You can get them, and you can actually get them. Um, well, they they cheat a little on it. Now let let me <laughs> let me let me uh, rephrase. You got to dip them in Easter egg dye, right? Well, the <laughs> lenses are colored. It's yeah. not the bulb that's colored. 
Okay. And uh, you got to watch where you buy them things because I bought a bunch of blue ones last year. Right. And the more it rained, the whiter they got. Ah. And they came from China. Well, of course. And and the the color they put on the bulb will wash off. Huh. And uh, I had just a bunch of strands of white light bulbs when I got finished yeah. by the end of Christmas. I'll have to be careful that. Was, that. that was wrong. At yeah. first, it looked kind of cool because some of them would get white and the other ones, the rest of them would be blue. Yeah. Kind of looked like twinkling stars up there. Kind of looked kind of look like you meant for it to be that way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but then it kind of went from twinkle to supernova. They were all the same color. <laughs> so, oh, so be careful what you buy, you know. That's true. We just about uh, we just about out of time now. Next week is uh, Thanksgiving weekend. That's right. And uh, the good folks at Grace Broadcasting have uh, given all the on air staff the weekend off. We'll be off Thursday, Friday, and uh, we won't be doing this show next Saturday. So we'll be back in two weeks. We'll right be here. here. Yep. On ninety three point one with Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. Thanks to all of our texters this morning, our callers. You guys have a great, great weekend and have a great and blessed Thanksgiving on us. Be safe and uh, we'll see you in two weeks.